All right, guys, I am gonna film this, and it's actually recording now. I know that I uh, was planning on filming them during both block two and four. However, they both did not record. So I'm just gonna go over some of the basics that we covered in case this is something you do wanna come back to, uh, whether you're a remote learner or you, know, you just wanna brush up or take a look at some of the techniques. So this was one of the first pieces that I had started on. Um, we went over how we're working with like very organic shapes. So shapes inspired by nature. Um, I went in and I made all of these pieces by hand separately and then I attached them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I did that. Uh, what I started with was essentially like a large coil piece and I didn't make it exact or anything because it is gonna be organic. And I went in and I just started kind of compressing the clay with my fingers to form some type of abstract shape. Now you can elongate it, you can use a longer coil if you want, but just for this demo, I'm gonna show you on a smaller piece of clay. So you're gonna to wanna to use tiny coils. And I'm gonna be actually smoothing these in, so I'm not gonna slip and score them. But I'm gonna use this to go around part and really just start to build up some three dimensionality to the work. So you could see even just adding that one coil on makes such a big difference. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna really flatten out this piece because I wanna make a small cutout. Um, a lot of these had circular or oval pieces in them. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna smooth that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna attach some more coil around it. Now when you're working with these coils that you don't have to start with a huge piece of clay. Um, just a small piece of clay will do. And you could even break it in half if you need like a really small piece. I'm gonna take a little bit of slip, put it on there. And I'm just gonna start going in now and attaching it to the form. And I'm gonna stay inside first. And you could pinch this out. You could make it really whatever shape you would like to. I'm gonna make this one a little skinnier and I'm gonna attach it on directly on top of this. Now, like I showed online, um, the back of these is kind of flat. So when I originally went and added these pieces on, um, I, I do plan on going behind the vase and covering up those sections with pieces that are facing outward. All I did to attach these on was just slip and score them, smooth them in a little bit, and uh, I had these pieces attached on. I kind of like that. Um, I think I'm gonna attach that on right there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of slip on it. I'm going to line it up how I want it to be. And you really wanna hold it there until you get your nice bond. And then we're gonna smooth it in. Okay. You're probably gonna need a little bit of extra clay to smooth this in, but once you get it, um, you know, you'll have a really, really lovely piece. So. The next one we took a look at was this wild guy over here that has incorporated all these different coil forms, really working with movement, um, emulating these rope-like consistencies. I'm gonna take this off just because for those of you that are in block two, you didn't see this section. I actually made this piece and I was gonna put it on my other pot that I had just shown you, but it kind of fit perfectly here. So I slipped and scored it on and I smoothed it in. 
from there, I kind of started to like shape it in and, you know, really make it one with the pot. And you could see how I incorporated that in there. Now, over here, it's a little smushed. Maybe I'll go in and I'll add a little bit of clay to cover that up. Just get a little bit of slip. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to cover this whole section through here to kind of bring it all together. And not only am I slipping, I'm also smoothing it in. So just by adding that one extra coil, I made like a whole interesting pattern going on now. I know that when I went over it in class, um, I had talked how I was kind of bringing this over and then swirling this up on the side. I think I'm gonna kind of continue with that. Um, so I'm gonna go in with some clay and I am gonna roll out a thin coil. And I can't believe I was so silly and I did not, like, it didn't record twice, but that's what it is. So I'm gonna bring this over and I think I'm gonna kind of emulate this, but I'm gonna fit it into the area I wanna fill. So I'm not, I'm gonna kind of wrap it through like that. And then I'm gonna start to bring it down because we will want to fill in all of our space with all of these decorative coils and textures. We talked about using um, some rope to push into our form. I'm gonna actually like hold it kind of like this and see if I could get maybe like an impression going this way. You can also use tools to go in and get impressions as well. So maybe I'll do those few there. And then maybe I will go in and just kind of scrape some of this as well. Now I'm doing it organized though, so it's definitely all going in one direction. I'm not just going in and like randomly scraping. And you could fill as much space as you want. I, I just like doing like a little space because then it, re, uh, it leaves a lot more room for decoration. And then I'm gonna probably continue to coil through here. But just so you guys can get an idea of what we're going for with these, um, getting all these interesting designs in, making sure that we're really like bulking up the top in a way that's gonna be super interesting, creating these cave-like walls, um, you know, on the insides. And, you know, of course I'll help you work on them, but just kinda keeping all those different things in mind. So the last piece of Jomon pottery we discussed was something kinda like this. So with all these different pieces hanging off, um, we went in and we did a handle. Um, with the handle, we wanna make sure that we're cutting diagonally to attach it on. And um, I had a little bit more of a plan with this one. However, as I was demoing it, I don't know if I, I'm really gonna stick with that plan anymore. But I started like a little rainbow-esque design and then just slipping and scoring like a whole section here and attaching in coil by coil. Now I'm gonna eventually go in and wrap like a, um, a thicker coil along here, maybe with like um, some more definition in it, maybe some carving. And I'm gonna actually go in and I'm gonna coil all of this up as well. Um, the reason I wanted to get the bottom part and the top part done first is so that I can overlap with the coils 
on putting on this midsection over any of like the little inconsistencies that there might be from smoothing in any of these different shapes I'm making. So hopefully what I showed you guys in class was helpful. I did want to just, you know, briefly touch up on these forms again. I might film another video um, tomorrow. Today I'm a little tired because, you know, this is like what my third time filming this and uh, so yeah, here's just a few little clips for you, but um, yeah, absolutely uh, let me know what you need help on. And remember that we are filling in the whole entire form with lots of intricate designs, details, um, so that when we stain them, it's gonna really like seep into all of this unique, rich design. And you're gonna get a really, really awesome, amazing, beautiful finish.